Hello humans, welcome to Audio Face or Video Face if you're watching us on YouTube. It's episode 51, I am Sean. I'm Dan. Apparently. Not I'm always the Pan from the internet. Um, that's my uh, gay alter ego that I'm doing for Michael Jin. Happy Pride. Oh, okay, gay, gay, gay alter ego, I fucks with it. Yeah. <laughs> gay alter ego, as should, if that's not usually me. Should I uh, like have a drag queen version of Sean? Ooh, that's too much sauce. That's uh, premium content. That's, that's a premium, premium content. content. <laughs> All right, this is a podcast about music news and music culture. And there's quite a lot of music news there's and music culture this week. Um, we're going to be talking about Yay, unfortunately. Or fortunately, we'll talk about that. Um, and everything going around that. We also got Father John Misty's new album, God's Favorite Customer. And speaking of Kanye and music news and music culture, we have the best discussion conversation about that. Um, we'll be posting this discussion conversation on YouTube as well as it being on the rest of the podcast that you can listen to. Um, and that's going to be about publicity stunts, right? Sean's excited about that. Actually, I am. Because yeah. too many people do stupid publicity stunts, but we'll talk about that. That's what, else what we're are you here excited for. about? We got some damn good singles out today or this week. So we have the 1975, give yourself a try. And we have Gorillas, Humility, and you have. Um, youth of the youth apocalypse. Of, uh, yeah. Youth of the apocalypse. Drop the bomb. So we'll go with 1975 first, which is, as you all know, one of my favorite bands. I, I've been hyped as shit for this. They had a countdown on their website for a month, and they kept doing all these cryptic posters all around England. I go, please stop. You're gonna give me a heart attack. Yeah. So on uh, Thursday, they went on BBC Radio One and dropped their single "Give Yourself a Try," and um, it's really good. It's a. It's. A, like a new era of the 1975, which they uh, they tend to do from album to album. And this is a really upbeat, happy pop tune, but it's not the stupid pop, as I call it, you know, as some artists do. And um, so they also dropped a music video of it um, on June 1st. And they did like a whole, they did a couple interviews and stuff throughout Radio X, uh, Radio One as well, a couple of different stuff over in England. Yeah, over in the um, in God's land, God's plan, God's plan. And um, so one thing that's interesting that if you listen to the song, it's kind of autobiographical with Maddie Healy, the lead singer, of um, like shit he's been going through, like really recently as well. So there is uh, a link to I think we should can we put this down. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we, so we'll, we'll put this down. I want people to listen to it. Is um, on. Radio X of the um, Maddie Healy on uh, the new song. He's like, I was addicted to drugs, which I know he's already like kind of explained that before throughout his career and whatnot. He's been doing different things, but I guess late last year, going up until January, February, he was getting clean. He said it was just a nightmare of trying to get clean and figuring out kind of what he wanted the sound for the album to be. But he realized he's like, you don't force it. You just we just create. We make music. And whatever it is, that's what it is. I mean, not only that, but getting addicted to drugs and going through the recovery process and having to go through the, like, rehabilitation process. Because mm -hmm. you have withdrawals that are really brutal. Oh, you have so much um, shit. And, like, trying to create a work. Like, that's... We've talked about this relationship between artists and, like, the inherent suffering that comes with art. Yeah. And um, how different artists deal with depression and addiction. And so this is a, another kind of point in that longer conversation we've had on other episodes of Audio Face that you can check out. Yeah, so I like it because it's a very open song where it's not hiding anything. He said, why why should, why should people lie? Just tell the truth and put it out there of what's going on. And that's what the song is. But he made it very a happy tune. It's upbeat and really, really good. So two things on it. He announced that they're going to have two albums, one coming out in October and that's called A Brief Inquiry of Online Relationships. That's the one we've seen posters around for, and that's where the mar the most recent marketing campaign has been for, naturally, because you probably wouldn't do a marketing campaign for an album you're releasing that isn't your next one, but one after that. Yeah, but, and then uh, they have another album coming out in May, and I forget. Of next year. May of next year. Because we just finished May of this year. <laughs> yeah, right. So he said that he doesn't want, he didn't want it to be like a double album. He wanted more, so, like, because they create so much music. It's like Gorillaz, where they said they're on tour and they're always making music, always making stuff. So they said, I don't want to make a double album because he said it's bad for fans and it's not get, like a good look. Uh, <coughs> Trap. Right, exactly. So they're making one album, then in May, they're dropping uh, Notes on a Conditional Form, which would be a, a different album. So I think with that, they might, like, 
try to do songs that they're making right now and they want to fine tune up a little bit, try up different sounds. So overall, very exciting, especially if you're a fan of 1975. So whew, that's good shit. I'm very happy. So October, it's happening. Can I get to mine? Yeah, how about it? So before we talk about that, the 1975, um, I really love yeah. this new song. It's very upbeat. It's very like, it's definitely a new era for the 1975. Um, but all the other albums, as Sean said previously, marked a new like kind of jump. But this is an even bigger jump mm -hmm. from two to three than I think one to two was. And so it's really cool that a band kind of this early and new is able to do this. That shows they're a good band. I'll be very excited for them. And I have more points about it, but I'll get to that as I incorporate it to other album reviews, which is going to be interesting. That's why you I, watch um, the rest of the episode. But for I'm now, excited to hear this. Let's, let's indulge me. Because Gorillaz, oh, yes. my favorite band of all time, since I was a kid, um, released two songs off of their album, The Now Now, which will be coming out later this month, June 29th, which will be great to review. Uh, Gorillaz fans, fans are used to waiting... Um, Years. <laughs> there's an old joke in like the super Gorillaz fan group called April-ish, which is like this ambiguous point in time in which Damon and Jewel... Jamie Hewlett announced things. So April ish is usually like five, six years between Gorillaz mm -hmm. albums. But it's like this radio, is... between Radiohead albums. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna like die for five years and wait. Yeah. But I mean, this album is being produced by the same guy, I forget his name, but he also produced Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino for the Arctic Monkeys. Really? Which I think is good because that's dope because that's one of my favorite albums of the year. And I also feel like Damon Albarn, um, he's a g very talented and great producer, but um, I think Humans, he mostly did a lot of the production himself, and the downside to Damon Albarn is that he has a lot of ideas, and it's hard to kind of get him to focus. Yeah. And when you want to be a really good band, as Gorillaz has been in the past, you really need to focus. And so, um, Humility has that focus. The album The Now Now is going to be divided into like two parts, but relax, it's like six songs per part, so... In reality, it's going to be 12 songs. It's like okay. how Elevators 1 and 2 from Bishop Nauru was still like a normal that. size album, but it's shorter. I like that, because that was my problem with Humans, was... It was so all over the place and it had too many features that it just, I couldn't get a sound out of the album. There was some absolute tunes in there, but yeah, there was some stuff where I'm like, this is just a little too much. So, Humility, which featuring George Benson. Yeah. With, they put a music video of them like fucking around in Venice. Hella sponsored by Beats. Right. <laughs> so, like Deep State sponsored by Beats. Um, great song. Yeah. Great music video as well, but that's the gorillas I loved. And so I heard that song, I go, holy hell, this, I am looking forward to this album a lot more because Humans really like disappointed me in a while, but this is, this is what I want to hear. And um, I know I usually don't do this because there's an audio face rule, but Lake Zurich was a another song they released. They released, they released it on the same day, so yeah. I allow it. Yeah, they released it on the same day, and it was the... Whereas Humility is kind of like a calmer sort of track, but still like poppy. Mm -hmm. Lake Zurich has, um, it's really instrumental, not a lot of lyrics, but it's, it's the lyrics. one that was used in the t teaser. And it's mm -hmm. just this really like kind of funky, upbeat, it's like super gorillas. Like that is a gorillas song through and through. And so very excited for that. It's going to be very hard to basically ignore my favorite band until the end of the month. But right. for the people, we will do this. And then... Uh, lastly, on the new singles thing, I wanted to point out Youth of the Apocalypse, Drop the Bomb. Um, Youth of the Apocalypse is a brand new group. This is yep. their first single, and it's started by the guitarist of Gorillaz. Mm -hmm. Gorillaz has had like a bunch of different artists be their guitarist, but they kept the same one, starting with the Plastic Beach Tour. Um, the guy with the mohawk? Maybe. Yeah, he's, he has a wild hairstyle. Yeah, is that what, yeah, I remember he had... Yeah. Not that guy. No. Um, it's a different one, but um, he they did a single. It's like a small group of like six people I'd say yeah. and they did a single with MF Doom called uh, Drop the Bomb and I'm optimistic about it because it sounds it was really good. really good. good. Yeah. It's not normal rap at all. It's like pop rap. Yeah. If that's a good way to explain it and um, just listen to it. Youth of the Apocalypse Drop the Bomb uh, has some good themes in it as well. Yeah. It's Jeff Wooten is his name and I'll pull up a picture of you yeah, for yeah, it so, so you can kind of see. Um, but in different times, he has had a mohawk or like a yep. kind of thing, yep. but in different times, he hasn't. But anyways, um, it's a really good song. I think 
you can't judge a lot from this is their literally their first song ever and it's released on Fader's music label, which is interesting that that That's exists. Very interesting. But um, I think it's going to be more like good things to come from this group. This is kind of what I want to see, like more it's taking rap into new places. Because yeah. let's say rap's getting kind of stagnant. Um, it was very stagnant. 